Okay, in this video, we're going to cover applications of extrema. And so our very first problem says for us to minimize the distance from the point to the plane. Um, and it has that equation there. So x minus y plus z equals 15. And since we're trying to minimize the distance, we are going to need to use the distance formula, which is um, uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared, OK? Um, now, if I don't know what the point is, I'm going to leave those as, um, oh, I do know what the point is. So the point is zero, zero, zero. So that will be my, um, that will be my X1, my Y1, and my Z1, okay? So let me move my little thing out of the way, there we go. So then it does tell me in parentheses though, it says as a hint to simplify the calculations for yourself, go ahead and minimize the square of the distance. So if I take the distance squared, it's basically just what's inside the house. And if I plug in um, zero for X1, zero for Y1, and then um, zero for Z1. So far, this is what I have. Um, but if I am gonna try to compare this point with this, I'm going to change X and Y. So I'm gonna say um, F of X, Y is going to be um, just a X, and I'm gonna try to find this coordinate for X, right? Um, just Y. And then for Z, I'm gonna solve this for Z. So if I'm solving for Z, I would have to add the Y and subtract the X. So it would be 15 um, minus X plus Y. Um, and then minus zero squared. Okay. So if I simplify this, it would be X squared plus Y squared plus 15 minus x plus y squared. So another 15 minus x plus y. Um, I mean, I could leave it like that. Mm, I think I will leave it like that, leave it just squared. It's not too bad to take derivatives of something squared. So there's no sense in like um, distributing it and combining all the like terms and simplifying. I can just leave it just like this, okay? And so this is the function that I want to minimize. So from here is where I'm gonna start taking all of my partial derivatives, okay? So fx is going to be 2x plus zero plus two times 15 minus x plus y, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside with respect to x is negative one. So we get 2x minus 30, um, plus 2x minus 2y. So we end up with 4x minus 2y minus 30. And then now similarly, I'm gonna go do the same thing for fy. And so then I get zero, 2y plus two, 15 minus x plus y to the one. And the derivative of the base with respect to y is one. So this becomes 2y plus 30 minus 2x plus 2y, which is um, negative 2x plus 4y plus 30. Um, and so then I'm going to solve this system of equations to go ahead and figure out what my um, um, critical point is. And so that is a system of equations. So I'm going to set my system of equations. If I set fx equal to zero, it means that this expression needs to equal zero for, and then fy equal to zero means this expression should equal zero. 
So if I multiply this bottom equation by two, that should help me to eliminate the x variable. So the top equation I'm gonna rewrite and the bottom equation I'm gonna multiply by two. And so then the x goes away and I get six y plus um, 30 equal to zero, which means that 6y equals negative 30 and y equals negative 5. And so then I'm going to take that and plug it back into either one of these equations to find x. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the top equation. So I get 4x plus 10 minus 30. I get 4x minus 20 equals 0, which means 4x equals 20 or x equals Five. Okay. Um, so then that is going to be my critical point. And if I want the Z value, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the X and the Y plus Z equals 15. This is the plane that was given. So 10 plus Z equals 15, which means that Z equals five. So the critical number is going to be five negative five and five. Um, and that is going to be the guy that gives me a distance. Now I can verify whether or not it's actually a minimum, but it, it's not necessarily required that I do that. But if we do, we could. So F double X would be um, this derivative FX and then take the derivative of that with respect to X again, I would get four then four or FYY would be the derivative of FY, but with respect to Y. So it would be four. And then FXY would be the FX and then take the derivative with respect to Y, which would be negative two. And so then D would equal four times four minus negative two squared, which is 16 minus four, which is um, 12, which is greater than zero. And so then I would go and look at F double X. And since that is equal to four, which is also greater than zero, this means we are talking about a minimum, okay? And the problem did ask me for the minimum distance. Um, so this is going to be that point that is the minimal distance away from um, zero, 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 but on the plane, okay? So five comma negative five comma five. Oh, and I need to keep it in parentheses. Oh, no, I know where the minimum distance is going to occur, but if I actually wanna know what the minimum distance is, then I do need to plug this point and this point, both of the points into the distance formula. So distance is actually going to be the square root of 5 minus 0 squared plus negative 5 minus 0 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared. And so that's going to be 25, 25, 25 is going to be 125, which is 5 square root of 5. And so this is the minimum distance. So this implies that there's a minimum at this point. But if I want to find the minimum distance, I do actually have to plug it in to find the actual distance. Okay. So let me erase this box because it shouldn't have been boxed. Five square root of five. It's a lot of fives here. Um, but five square root of five should have been my solution. And let's go check it just to make sure that it's correct, right? Um, oh no, it says no. Oh, because I'm a dork. Five, 25 plus 25 plus 25 is not 125. I was multiplying them. I'm supposed to be adding them. So 25 plus 25 plus 25 is actually only 75, right? And then 75 is actually five square root of three. My bad. That was pretty much a brain fart. I mean, I've been recording videos all day. So 
Um, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> now we got it. Um, okay, let's go ahead and go on with number two. I really don't want to write on the back of that page because it looks like you can see too much of it. So let's go ahead and move on with number two. Number two says, find the minimum distance between this point and this plane. So here's my plane. And here's my point. And so remember, this is going to be x1, y1, and then z1. And then we're going to say x2 is just going to be x, y2 is just going to be y. But then z2 is going to be this function solved for z. So it's going to be 4 minus x plus y. OK, and so then if I plug these into my distance formula, distance squared, it's going to be x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 plus um, z2 minus z1. And I can clean that up a little bit. This is y squared. And this is actually going to be negative x plus y minus 5 squared. OK, so we're going to say this is our um, function. I'm sorry, you're seeing nothing but my head. I'm so close to the camera right now. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get to it. Um, dum, 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 dum. So let's find fx. So fx is going to be 2x minus 8. And then the chain rule is just 1. The derivative of this is 0. The derivative of that is 2, bring in the power, and then the chain rule. So I'm just going to get negative 1. So we get 2x minus 16 minus 2x plus 2y. Oh, no, that's actually a negative 2 being distributed. So this becomes positive 2x. Then this becomes negative 2y. And then that becomes negative 10, and it's positive 10. So I get 4x minus 2y minus 6. Now for fy, the derivative of this would be 0, and this would be 2y. And then the derivative of that would be 2, negative x plus y minus 5 to the 1 power. And chain rule would just be 1. So we get. 2y minus 2x plus 2y minus 10, which is negative 2x plus 4y minus 10. And then if I set each fx and fy equal to 0, I'm going to get the system of equations And so if I multiply the bottom one by 2, that's going to give me negative 4x, um, positive 8y, and negative 20 equal to 0. And so if I combine these two together, the 4x and the minus 4x will cancel. And I will get 6y minus 26 equal to 0, which means I'm going to get 6y equals to 26 or y equals 26 over 6, which is the same thing as 13 over 3. OK, so that just happens to be the y value that we found. Um, and then let's go ahead and go for it. So I'm going to plug this y value back into my function to figure out x. And I'm going to go ahead and plug it in the top function. So I get 4x minus 2 times this value. Minus 6 equals a 0. So this is 4x minus 26 over 3 minus 6 equals 0. So that's going to be, let's see, 
negative 26 over 3 minus 16 is negative 74 over 3, which means 4x will equal positive 74 over 3. And if I divide it by 4, the calculator says I will get 37 over 6. I literally just typed in 74 over 3 divided by 4, and it gave me 37 over 6. Okay, so these are my two, my x and my y value. And if, um, but it does say find the minimum distance. So if I do have x and y, then together I can find z by doing 4 minus x um, plus y. So that actually is 4 minus 37 over 6 plus 13 over 3 is 13 over 6. And if I want to know the minimum distance, right, we still have to calculate the distance. So the distance is the square root of x2 minus x1, which was 8 squared plus y2 minus y1, which was zero, plus z2 minus z1 squared. And so let me see what we get inside. And I get 4, 1, 3 over 6. And if I take the square root of that, it doesn't give me the nice number. So I'm going to do the square root of 4, 1, 6, 4, 1, 3, I'm sorry. Or it doesn't tell me to round, so I cannot round. Over the square root of 6, and then I'm going to rationalize the denominator. So I get 6 at the bottom, but 4, 1, 3 times 6 is going to be the square root of 2, 4, 7, 8. And I don't think I can simplify that. No, it doesn't simplify this 2, 7, 2, 4, 7, 8. So this is going to be my answer. I hope this is the correct answer. Um, number six. If it's not, I will find where my error is, but hopefully that's it. And of course, no, it's not. So let me make sure where we went wrong. So we did x minus eight, y minus zero, and then z minus nine. And so that gave me negative x, positive, negative 5. I'm going to pause while I figure this out because there's no sense in you guys um, listening to me do that. I think I found my error. So my error happens to be here. When I did negative 26 over 3 minus 6. When I did in the calculator this time, I did not get 74 over 4 over 3. I got 44 over 3. And so when I divide 44 over 3 by 4, I get 11 over 3. And then when I plug in 11 over 3, I get 4 minus 11 over 3 plus 13 over 3. I get 14 over 3. And then when I plug in these values, so for x, I'm going to plug in 11 over 3. For y, I still have 13 over 3. And for z, I have 14 over 3. So that's going to change my answer inside this radical.
So let's see. Um, 11 over 3 minus 8 squared plus 13 over 3 minus 0 squared. And then plus 14 over 3 minus 9 squared. And I get 1, 6, 9 over 3, which is the square root of 1, 6, 9 over the square root of 3. Now this is 13, but there is no square root of 3. So we're going to rationalize the denominator. And I get 13 over 3 square root of 3. So let's try that. 13 square root of 3 over 3. OK, now I like that. It's because of this number. I had the wrong number right there. OK. So let's go ahead and look at number three. Number three seems to be very similar. So number three says that z equals this. And the point now is this. So I know that d squared is going to be x minus this x value squared plus y minus this y value squared plus z, which is this expression, minus 0 squared. Okay. So this becomes x plus 2 squared. This becomes y plus 2 squared. And then this isn't really there because it's minus 0, right? And then when you square a house, it, you just have 2 minus 2x two minus 2y. Two so if I start doing my fx, I get 2 times x plus 2 times 1 plus 0, um, and then minus 2. So I get 2x plus 4 minus 2, which is 2x plus 2. Now for fy, I'm going to get 0, and then 2 times y plus 2 times 1, um, 0, 0, and minus 2. So I get 2y plus 4 minus 2, which gives me 2y plus 2. And if I set both fx equal to 0 and fy equal to 0, that will give me x equal negative 1, and it will give me y equals to negative 1. If this is equal to 0, I would minus 2 and then divide by 2. And if this was equal to 0, I would minus 2 and then divide by 2. So I get negative 1 for both of them. So then now that means that z would be the square root of 2 minus 2 times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 which gives me the square root of 6. And there is no square root of 6, so I'm going to leave that alone. But since I'm asked to find the minimum distance, I'm going to plug this into the distance formula. So the distance formula is going to be uh, this x-coordinate minus the x-coordinate given plus this y-coordinate minus the y-coordinate given. And then this z-coordinate minus the z-coordinate given. And so then we end up with um, the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus positive 1 squared, which is 1. And then the square root of 6 squared is just 6. So I get the square root of 8, which is 2 square root of 2. So I'm going to try to type that in here. And let's see how we do. Okay, so far so good. Now, for number four, I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze it on this space down here, so I'm going to go to another page. Okay. Um, and I'm getting awfully cold in here, so let me grab my jacket real quick. 
not a jacket, but a sweater. It's just like a poncho, really. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, let's see. It says a home improvement contractor is painting the walls and ceiling of a rectangular room. The volume of the room is 875 cubic feet and the cost of paint is eight cents per square foot and the cost of the ceiling paint is 14 cents per square foot. Find the room dimensions that will result in the minimum cost for paint. Okay, so um, it says a rectangular. Okay, so first thing is I'm gonna draw and then I'm gonna try to figure this out from there, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is if I imagine, bear with me, I am awful at drawing, so I'm trying. Okay. Okay, so we'll say that this is the ceiling, right? This is like the outside of the room, but we're gonna say if I were in the room, this would be the ceiling, right? So I don't know how long it is. I don't know how wide the room is. Um, and I don't even know the height there, okay? but I'm just going to label them um, X, Y, and Z, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that information that they gave us. So they gave us one that the volume was how much? 200 and something. Uh, oh, 875. So 875.00. And they also told me that the cost of the walls was going to be um, 0 0.08 dollars or eight cents per square foot. Okay. And then the cost for the ceiling was going to cost, I believe, 14 cents. Yes. Um, 0 0.14 per square foot. Okay, so if I want to figure out yes, if I want to figure out the total cost, it's going to be the cost to pay for the walls plus the cost to pay for the um, ceiling. Okay, now the cost to pay for the walls is going to be this eight cents per square foot times the number of square feet. Now, how many square feet are there? So I've got these walls here. Now the dimensions of the walls, um, the dimensions of this wall is going to be X and Z. And there's another wall in the back with those same dimensions, X and Z. Okay, so I have two walls that have to have the area X, Z, plus the walls on the side. That measurement is Y times Z, so that I can get that area. But there's another wall over here on the back side, so I have two of those walls with area of Y, Z. Now for the ceiling, it was 0.14 feet, and there's only one ceiling, there's not two, right? You're not painting the floor, you're just painting the walls and the ceiling. Okay, so I only need to know the area of this dimensions, and so it'd be x times y. I don't need two of them because um, we're not painting the floor with the same uh, paint, okay? So let's go ahead and see what we got there. So we're going to say that this is um, 0, 0.0, actually, Point one, right? Point one six x z 
plus 0.16yz plus 0.14xy. Now, if we want to talk about the volume, okay, the volume we know is 875, but we also know how to calculate volume. Volume is just length times width times height. So this 875 is going to be um, x times y times z, okay? And um, since I know that it is uh, 875, I can take this equation and solve for z. And I get that 875 over xy equals z. And so if I put these two equations together, right, if I substitute for z here and here, I'm going to get that c equals 0 0.16x times 875 over xy plus 0.16y times 875 over xy and then plus 0.14xy. And so what we're doing is we're creating a function in terms of just x and y. Now the x is gonna cancel and the y's are gonna cancel here. And then let me see. 0 0.16 times 875 is 140. So I get 140 over y plus again 140 but over x plus and I might as well put 14 as a des as a fraction and I get xy 7xy oh no I'm just gonna leave it as a decimal I'm not gonna mess around with that what for, right? 0.14xy. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now, what I do want to do is I want to um, rewrite this as 140y to the negative 1, and then this would be 140x to the negative 1, and then finally the last term. Okay, now if I'm going to minimize the cost, this is the one that I'm going to start taking derivatives of. So for CX, it's going to be negative 140Y to the negative two divided by negative two. This would, oh no, the derivative of the first term would be zero because there's no X's in the first term. Then the derivative of the second term would be negative 140 um, X to the negative two divided by negative two. And then the derivative of this with respect to y is 0.14, or with respect to x is 0.14y. So this becomes 70 over x squared plus 0.14y. Now if I do cy, the derivative of this would be negative 140y to the negative 2 over negative 2, derivative of that would be 0. And then the derivative of this would be 0.14x, which is the same as saying 70 over y squared plus 0.14x. Now, again, if I'm setting each one equal to zero to find, actually it's equal to zero or where it's undefined, okay? So this can actually, um, So this would actually equal zero, and then where would it be undefined? It would be undefined when x is equal to zero, and then this one would be undefined when y is equal to zero, okay? But that really wouldn't make any sense, right? Because x and y represent the dimensions of the room, and if x were zero, then there really isn't a room because one of the measurements doesn't even exist, right? It's just zero. Um, so, knowing where it's undefined isn't really going to help us find this critical number. So we really need to figure out where it equals zero. So I have this system here and it's an ugly system, but it is a system. And if I multiply everybody by the common denominator here, I will get seven, 70 plus 0.14x squared y equal to zero. And if I multiply this one by y squared, I would get 70 plus um, 
x y squared equal to zero. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to cancel any variables here, okay? But I can use substitution instead. Since I can't use elimination, I can use substitution method. So I'm actually going to take um, the top equation and solve for y. I would have to minus the 70 over and then divide by 0 0.14 x squared. So that means y is going to be a negative 70 over 0 0.14 x squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace this y. Okay, so this becomes 70 plus 0 0.14 x times negative 70 over 0 0.14 x squared squared. 70 times negative 70 times negative 70 is 4900. But then that 4900. Well, just let me do it in pieces. I was trying to do it more in my head, but I'm not going to do that. So I get 4900 over 0 0.14 squared is 0 0.0196 x to the fourth, because the square squared is x to the fourth. And then this x would actually cancel one of these x's, leaving me with the cube. And I'm going to minus the 70 over. So I'm going to have equal to negative 70. And I'm going to have, um, let's see, 0 0.14 times 4900. So I'm multiplying these, but then I'm going to divide by that. And I get 35123 over x to the third or x to the negative third. I'm just going to flip over x to the third. So then if I multiply both sides by the common denominator x to the third, I'm going to get that 35,000 equals negative 70x cubed. And then if I divide by negative 70, I'm going to get negative 500 equals x cubed. And if I take the cube root of that, um, I'm going to get about negative 7.9. This does not make sense. Why is this not coming out? Um, as it should. <laughs> what is going on? Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let me mess around with this again. I'm gonna start over because I don't know what happened here, but this does not seem to be working out the way I thought it would. Um, it shouldn't be that complicated. So I must have made a wrong turn somewhere. I know my derivatives are correct, so I don't think that's where it was. I think it was in my substitution that I made. Um, I think manipulating the equations too much was unnecessary and it's throwing my answer off. I don't know what happened, but I don't want to go in and try to figure it out. <laughs> I shouldn't be recording any more videos today, honestly. I'm starting to do it again where I'm making weird um, errors or second guessing myself, things like that. And when I've seen too much math for the day, that's consequently, that's unfortunately, that's just what happens, okay? Um, so I'm here with my derivatives, right? And I do know that I got to set each one of them equal to zero. So when I do set this one equal to zero and that one equal to zero, I am going to do this substitution part. So I'm going to subtract that over, which means I will get 0 0.14y equal to negative 70 over x squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Um,
Oh, I think I know where the mistake is. I think I'm getting confused between my derivatives and my integrals. I'm only supposed to bring down the power and then decrease the power by one, and that's it. So I shouldn't be dividing by negative two. That's what's going on. So I was like, I know my derivatives are correct. No, they ain't. <laughs> um, my derivatives were not correct. Okay, now that makes sense because then my numerator would be negative 140 and this numerator, there we go. Okay, what was happening is that I was seeing where the problem was going and I was realizing that I was going to get negative X values. Negative X values do not make sense for the uh, dimension of a room, okay? And that's why I knew something was going on, but I had gone so far in that I really didn't wanna go back and try to figure out where it went wrong, okay? So where it went wrong was that I, I got my, my power rules confused, okay? Um, for derivatives, you're only supposed to bring down the power and then decrease the power by one. So I was multiplied and then I brought my power down, okay? So these should be this way. So when I solve for y or if I solve for x, I'm gonna move this over, but it's gonna become positive. So this would be 0.14y equal to positive 140 over um, x squared. And then if I divide that, so 140 divided by 0 0.14 is actually going to be 1,000. So this becomes y equal to 1,000 over x squared. Um, now this makes more sense because then I'll get a positive value, right? And then if I go back and plug it into either one of these equations, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this one. I can figure out what x is. So I get negative 140 over 1,000 over x squared squared plus 0.14x equal to zero. So this becomes negative 140 over whatever 1,000 squared is divided by x to the fourth. And then if I, instead of dividing by this, if I flip and multiply, I will get negative 140 times x to the fourth over 1,000 squared. And then I'm gonna multiply all three terms by 1,000 squared. So I get negative 140 x to the fourth um, plus 0.14 times 1,000 squared gives me one, four, zero, 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 zero. And then 1,000 squared times zero is still zero. And I still have this X. So now I'm gonna factor out a negative 140 X and I get X to the third and that big number divided by negative 140 is going to be negative 1,000. So when I set this equal to zero, you get x equal to zero. And when I set this equal to zero, I get the cube root of a thousand, which is I believe 10. Yes, 10. And that makes sense. This does not make sense for the dimension of a room, but this does make sense for a dimension of a room, 10 uh, feet. Now, if I wanna find y, I do have an expression here for y. So I'm gonna take this X value and I'm gonna plug it right there. So I get Y equals 1000 over 10 squared, which is 100. And 1000 divided by 100 is 10. Now that I have X and Y, right? We have X and we have Y. We're gonna plug those into the function for Z to figure out what Z is, okay? So now both of these guys are gonna get plugged into here. So we know that Z is gonna be 875 divided by 10 times 10, which is 875 divided by 100, and that's 8.75, okay? That's that there. So it tells me to find the cost of the sides or Find the dimensions of the sides. Remember the sides were here, okay? So this is the sides of the room was X and Y and they were both 10. So for the sides, we're gonna put 10. 
Now for the height, the height I had of the room labeled as Z and Z is 8.75. And now if I actually wanna know what the minimum cost is, then I'm going to come up here and I'm gonna actually plug in all of these values. So X being 10, Z being 8.75. Uh, y being 10 and Z being 8.75 and then X being 10 and Y being 10. And we get that the cost would be, let's see. I'm typing this in there exactly as it is. So just give me a second because it's going to take a minute. Well, then in that case, I'd say, give me a minute, all right? Um, but if I type that in my calculator correctly, I did get 392. So that's how much it would cost. And that would be 392. Fingers crossed, hopefully everything is good. And we did this problem correct. Um, no, it says it doesn't like my number. So let's go figure it out then. So 8.75 times 10, okay, times 16, and then double that, that's, uh, and then 0.14 times 100. Oh, I got 42. I don't know how I got such this big number. Let's see what happened in my calculator. So I did 0.14 times 10 times 10. Oh, I was putting the seeds here. I think that's what I set up. Yep. I needed to put a plus right there. So 16 times 10 times 8.75 plus 0.16. I had a parenthesis instead of a plus, which threw the whole thing off. Now it should be good. Yeah, and now it's 42. Let's try again. Ah, uh -huh. now it's 42. 42. Two. Now we're not all perfect, right? I'm sure you guys, as well as myself, we're going to get them wrong a couple times before you get them right. Um, but it does help to look back at your work and just try to figure out where it went wrong. Um, sometimes, like if you, like a moment like I had earlier when I erased the whole page, um, I just felt like there was something wrong with all of it but I should have just gone through everything all over again and just found where, where the mistake was, okay? Um, but we are gonna go ahead and, and move on to um, problem five. And so let's go ahead. I'm definitely gonna need a sheet because that one was already at the end. Just in case somebody needed to freeze it. At Everything we did there. Okay, number five. Let's see what's going on with number five. So for number five, we have C1 equal to 0 0.02 X1 squared plus 4X1 plus 580. Then we have C2 equal to 0.05x2 squared plus 4x2 plus 225. Now it does tell me that the candle cell for, okay, so it's the cost of manufacturing candles at one location and then at another location. And then the candle cell for $13 per unit and it says, find the quantity that should be produced at each location to maximize the profit P. So P is 13 X1 plus X2 minus C1 
minus C2. So of course, we're going to plug in these values for C1 and C2, right? So P is going to be 13X1 plus 13X2 if I just distribute, and then minus all of these terms in C1. So that's gonna be a negative, that's going to be a negative and a negative, and then minus all the terms in C2. So negative, negative, and negative, okay? And then if I combine my like terms, what is this gonna look like? P is going to look like, um, I've got X1 squared, And then I have these guys. So I have plus nine X1. And then for the X2 squared, I have negative 0 0.05 X2 squared. And then I have these guys for X2. So plus nine X2. And then finally, I have my constants there. So let me see. 580 and 225 is negative 805. Okay, so far so good. So this is my profit and I'm trying to um, find the quantity that should maximize my profits. So if I wanna maximize this, I definitely need to find those critical numbers, right? So PX1 because my variables are not x and y, they're x1 and x2. It's okay, you could change the names of the variables, it doesn't change the process. So with respect to x1, this would be negative 0 0.04 x1 plus nine, and then zero, zero, zero. Now px2 is going to be zero, zero, negative 0 0.10 x2 um, plus nine, and then another zero. Now, if I set each of these equal to zero, I will get, I will get X1 equal to negative nine over negative 0 0.04, which is what? Which is two, two, five. For over here, I will minus the nine and then divide by the 0 0.10 and I get 90. And so I think that's all it wanted just, just to know the number, find the quantity that should be produced at each location. So I think we're good, 225 and 90. It's actually a little bit shorter than I was thinking it was going to be. But it's just a matter of plugging in the C1 and C2 and finding those critical numbers. Yep, that's it. So we are done other than my mishap of not knowing where my error was. This section was not very difficult. It was pretty simple actually, right? Um, but I will continue on with 13.10 soon.